say. Like dinner. Did no one ever teach you that it's rude to text at the table? Let's see here. Hit me. Really, guys? We're not checking for these anymore? Ah, I'm with RJ Gale. You'll love this part. Help. <laughs> A text for help. You don't text for help, you cry for help. Far Cry 4 is an enormous game, and the series' signature combination of open-ended exploration and flexible first-person shooter tactics remains the star. It's at its best when you're going off and getting into trouble, but for all of its strengths, Far Cry 4 lacks focus. Its characters, mission, and story are a shotgun blast of confusion, with a few scattered hits of greatness along the way. The Himalayan country of Kirat is a terrific open world. It's a colossal, dense, visually diverse place that feels lived in, torn up, and ancient, and it's one of the best places I've visited in video games. I love discovering every piece of it on foot, in a wingsuit, or behind the stick of a personal helicopter. Navigating Kirat is an adventure, and uncovering its histories and myths, while learning how they collide with main character Ajay Gale, creates a convincing, special sense of place. Far Cry 4's greatest offense is failing to capitalize on this setting with strong characters. As the American son of Kirati freedom fighters who's come to scatter his mother's ashes, Ajay brings a smart, human premise to the table, but his complete ambivalence to the revolution he's swept up in undermines the entire thing. Half of the campaign's missions are strong, revolving around the rebellion, Ajay's family, and their connection to the charming and despicable antagonist, Pagan Min. <laughs> The dark places you can take your faction presents some interesting, ethically great choices, too. Siding with one of the Rebellion's bickering leaders, who are the strongest characters in Far Cry 4, can lead to some powerful and surprising moments. The weaker story quests relate to Min and his lieutenants. I barely remember what the missions were, or what completing them accomplished. Pagan Min is a great character, thanks to an excellent and twisted performance from actor Troy Baker. Terrorists, right? Now, please. Stay right here. Enjoy the Crab Rangoon. Don't move. I will be right back. But he's completely misused. Min has a disappointing, minimal presence throughout Far Cry 4's 15-hour campaign, and his poorly explained henchmen don't have time to become interesting before vanishing from the story entirely in sudden and confusing ways. Fortunately, Far Cry 4 is so big that its story, characters, and mostly forgettable objectives are dwarfed by everything else there is to do in Kirat. There are dramatic hostage rescues, assassinations, blood diamond recoveries, and quests to help citizens, all of which feed a phenomenally rewarding economy. As Ajay levels up, he earns skill points to become more damage resistant or uses enemies' weapons against each other. Hunting animals to craft weapon holsters and wallets makes for a rewarding long-term loop. Far Cry 3 players know this well, but it's still satisfying, and there's even more skills to discover and XP to earn in Far Cry 4. The strongest diversion of all is the supernatural side story set in Shangri-La. Commanding a tiger and taking down fearsome demons in a gorgeous and different aesthetic doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it's an interesting exploration of karate legend. Unpredictability is Far Cry 4's greatest strength, whether it's the surreal surprises in Shangri-La or the unexpected outcomes of attacking army outposts. Your master plan for liberating an enemy-occupied fortress may differ from mine in everything from our approach, weapons on hand, and whether or not we use animals or allies to our advantage. This versatility often leads to unforgettable moments, like that time you blew up a bear with C4 before it could maul your friends. Or that time the entire village caught fire in the middle of a fight when you were trying to be quiet about it. Two-player co-op amplifies these silly moments considerably. While one of you blows open the front door, the other can sneak from behind, taking down enemies with Silent Knife or Bow Kill. Far Cry 4's competitive multiplayer does a marvelous job of capturing the freedom, scale, and surprises of its co-op and campaign. The competitive multiplayer has two asymmetrical factions fighting in different ways, using the wide-open environments to their particular advantages. The Golden Path plays more like an aggressive Far Cry player might. Guns, explosives, vehicles, traps, that kind of thing. The Rakshasa borrows supernatural powers seen in Shangri-La, relying on invisibility and different types of arrows for their bow. I really like playing the Rakshasa. Teleporting with the blink arrow, whether for navigation, escape, or an instant kill, is a great tool. Summoning a tiger or a bear to guard an area works beautifully too. The maps aren't terribly notable, but that the heart and soul of Far Cry 4 found its way into a competitive mode at all borders on Miraculous. It's a bummer that matches start whether or not teams are even, and that not a lot of people are actually playing it, because this is actually great. 
Don't skip multiplayer just because it's not why you play Far Cry. Diversity is one of Far Cry 4's strongest assets, and it overwhelms the mostly disappointing story with countless opportunities for freeform adventure and fun. Visual variety, tons of distinct side quests, and a dense world with plenty of options always gave me something I wanted to do, and its satisfying economy had me obsessing over every side quest. It's a little bit safe, almost like Far Cry 3 ideas transplanted onto an amazing new place, but the elements are so empowering that it can be spectacular fun. For more on Far Cry 4, head over to IGN.